radar authority known for its contributions to airborne intelligence, space, air traffic control, and defense mission systems. Among his accomplishments is his leadership in designing advanced airport surveillance radars, making air travel safer. He was a principal engineer fellow, engineering fellow, at Raytheon Company, Integrated Defense Systems, that's in Sudbury, and he's played a key role in many radar and phased array radar systems developed in the last 40 years. He's written four popular books on radar, arrays, tracking, and he holds, he holds 10 patents. Morning! Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can you speak up? <laughs> that's the first pulse. The first pulse. <laughs> The wake up. Back, 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 back up one. Oops. Oh, in the right place. Whatever. You have enough time. No, you went the wrong. Back, oh, back up, back oh, up. Oh, okay. Back up. Yeah, there we go. Okay. It's a continuation of the talk I had last week. Uh, Flayed amounts on radar, phase arrays, and Einstein's duality theory. Next. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I had just gone through a big advance in integrated circuits, uh, 128 gigabytes on this stick, memory stick, which I carry around. Uh, it's equivalent to 130 billion tubes. 130 billion tubes at a dollar apiece is 130 billion dollars and 130 gigawatts of water tube. Uh, it's amazing, and we're very proud of that. But we can't get too cocky. That's about our brain. Our brain only weighs two to three pounds. Only requires around 20 watts. A mouse's brain. If we were trying, we tried to build a computer that's equivalent to a mouse's brain. Next. It would require a computer the size of a small city like Boston and require a few nuclear power plants to run it. <laughs> so, next. We have a long way to go. Next. We are really in the horse and buggy days still. Next. There are things that are taking place and prospects that will make it possible for us to achieve what a brain can do. One is transistors that can go hundreds of times faster than the present ones. So my laptop would be able to run at a clock speed hundreds of times faster. That's using graphene carbon transistors. A very new technology. Graphene is a carbon in a crystal, it's a one-dimensional crystal, one atom thick. It's a flatland, they call it. But it has a clock speed of terahertz as compared to, you know, three gigahertz on a laptop. Next. Next. The fellow over here on the left, he got the Nobel Prize for producing this graphene. Young guy. Usually you're almost dead before you get your Nobel Prize. He was giving the keynote talk at a conference I was at. Uh, he had a very good sense of humor. He called it the Flatland, my talk. Flatland, because that's the crystal. And he had a lot of nice jokes. I asked him for his view graphs and he gave them to me. <laughs> I'm rubbing shoulders with him. You know, I figured maybe I'd rub off. But it didn't work. Uh, didn't get a Nobel Prize. <laughs> Just You're wearing got carbon hurt. black. What? You're wearing carbon black. Right. <laughs> right, that's right. <laughs> Next. <laughs> but there are things that will allow our computers to run faster. A quantum computer is one thing. Next. Uh, synaptic transistors. Uh, Harvard University is copying the synapses uh, in the brain. Next. Here's the transistors. Next. Is a, we all know about re resistors, capacitors, and inductors. There's a fourth component called a memristor that was uh, predicted to exist, an HP 
found it, and it has a lot of promise. One of them being that you could do, do what a rat's brain does in the shoebox. <coughs> Turns out that I spoke to a fellow who worked at MIT for 30 years trying to figure out what a brain, our brain does. He says, we haven't figured it out yet, so couldn't do it in a shoebox with even metaphorium sisters. Next. Uh, this more in the next. Next. The spintronics uh, that allow us to uh, replace the von Neumann architecture for our computers, where you have a separate memory for your, uh, uh, circuitry for your memory and separate for your logic. Uh, here you'd have the same circuitry doing both. Next. In the far term, what's going to happen in the far term? We'll still see a growth in the capability of uh, computers. Uh, next. There's a fellow named Ray, Ray Kurzweil. Uh, they had an uh, interview with him on one of your talks here. He's a successful local fellow here, uh, graduated from MIT, MIT graduate. While he was in college, he actually appeared on What? I Got a Secret. And also, while he was in college, he sold some software that was worth like $5 million today. No slouch of a student. He predicts that by the year 2045, computers will be smarter than we are. And by the year 25, 2045, you'll be, if you make it back to then, you'll be able to live forever. You'll achieve, next. Or you'll be dead forever. <laughs> what? <laughs> or you'll be dead forever. <laughs> right, next. Next. Uh, the pharaohs, you know, they, they were looking to live forever and they had themselves buried in the pyramids. This is a picture of King Tut's mask. I took it at the Cairo Museum next to the Hilton Hotel in Cairo. Mm -hmm. Well, I studied those pyramids. Next. Here's one of them. Next. Here's the oldest 5,000 years, the Step Pyramid. I pointed out to them that those pyramids are really large phased arrays. <laughs> and those stones are petrified radiating elements. <laughs> Next. And here I'm lecturing on that subject in Arabic. Next. <laughs> and for my good work. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Next. <laughs> no uh, a little digression to uh, point out it's worthwhile going to conferences. Uh, I was at a conference on radar in Florence. Oh, this is a signal processing conference actually in Florence. Next. They had nice entertainment there. Next. A juggler. Next. <laughs> they gave a free concert, a Vivaldi concert, very nice at Opera Hall. Next. Here's my uh, sports car I was driving around in. <laughs> nice car. <Yeah>. Next. <laughs> I also went to a conference in China, in China, 2014, a math conference. A math conference. I almost went, 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 I didn't go. Next. Here's the attendees. And I'm right here. That's me. Turns out it was a very good conference. <laughs> Next. Two attendees? They, they thought I'm very young there, you know. <laughs> Next. Is that the university there? Next. At night. Next. This is the famous Bird's Nest uh, Stadium. I recommend going there, it's very nice. Next. Ah, back to uh, technology. Uh, phase the rays, They're putting them under your skin. It'll detect if you need uh, insulin and distribute the insulin. It'll detect if you need chemotherapy and you get your chemotherapy. Uh, another thing that where a lot of advances going on locally, next, is they're replacing the 
heart and kidneys of rats without rejection. They're using the same cell from your own body. And eventually do this for human beings. This is at uh, Mass General. Next. Uh, here's a young woman, a six-year-old, uh, who had uh, leukemia. And they gave her gene therapy. And uh, she survived without uh, regression. For six, she's still surviving after six years. Next. Uh, you can buy a robot, $180, that recognizes you, talks to you, dances with you. It's a bargain. Next. 3D printing is being used for satellites to get lower cost and faster production. Next. For the, street, the Dreamliner uh, airplane, saving millions of dollars per airplane. Next. For what story is this? Phaser Ray? What? What? I'm, I'm, I'm it's 3D to... printing. Yeah, but what's... Okay. 3D printing is actually used for phased arrays to get low cost phased arrays. I know a fellow working... He got his PhD at uh, UMass Lowell, and uh, he's from uh, Iran, and uh, he actually is trying to uh, uh, get a business started in 3D printing for low-cost 3D phased arrays. Uh, here's a, an engine that allows you to go to the moon in a few days. In four hours, rather, instead of a few days, and to Mars in uh, 70 days instead of a few years. Very uh, nice uh, breakthrough that's being yeah. worked on. How's it work? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Elon Musk. Yeah. Right, yeah. It has to do with the way the electrons uh, are bouncing around. Uh, it's not with mass. It's not, you, there's no, you know, you don't have fuel going out. To uh, so all self-contained. Next, uh, one of my professors he came up with the fuzzy logic. It's used in uh, cameras for autofocus. He told me he didn't make any money, but he got a lot of free cameras. Next, <laughs> that's uh, Professor Zadi uh, talking about cameras. Uh, you know, you don't like to bring or, uh, carry around your big uh, reflex cameras. You'd like to have something this big. This MIT uh, fellow felt the same way, and he's come up with a camera this size that's equivalent to your very expensive cameras with uh, like 20 to 400 tele uh, zoom. I understand it's being sold at uh, the stores now. Anybody see them? Uh, Best Buy, I was told. Next. He's an MIT graduate, by the way. Ah. I covered a lot of subjects, but I wanted to point out I only touched on uh, the top of what we could cover. One of the hottest subjects now is MIMO. What does that stand for? Multiple input, multiple output. And here you see a multiple input and a multiple input output through the cheeks and through the tongue. It's done in radar for phased arrays. I could talk about that. And we wouldn't jump the street, though. Next. Uh, metamaterials that allows you to get uh, an invisible man. Invisible man. Next. Uh, weather radars. Next. Uh, synthetic aperture radar. Next. Inverse synthetic aperture radar. Next. Foliage penetration radar. Next. Buried mines radar. Next. Over the horizon radar. Next. Oh, we're back to Einstein. Einstein. He, 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 uh, he's my favorite physicist. Uh, next. Here he is. <laughs> Famous for bicycle riding. <laughs> next. Uh, he has his famous equation, uh, E equals H nu. This is the one he got his Nobel Prize for. If he lived long enough, they would have got it for gravity waves too, right? Next. Uh, he's responsible for the invention of laser, which is used uh, as a laser pointer. It's used uh, in laser radars, in CD players, and uh, for communications. Next. And in the future, it's used for quantum computing. and. Uh,
quantum co communication. Uh, that's uh, where you encrypt next. The Chinese actually have achieved uh, communications using uh, uh, entanglement, where it's uh, secure, secure communication over a couple of thousand kilometers. Next. There's a group of scientists in the uh, Western world and also in China talk about using quantum radar to defeat stealth. Be able to see the stealth bombers. I pursued this uh, recently, uh, and I found out it only gives you a 60B advantage, which will not defeat stealth. So it doesn't look like that's going to come about next. So much for that. That's part of that. Next. We come back to uh, Einstein's famous uh, energy equation uh, between mass and energy. Next. Electrical engineers have to know the uh, E equals IR equation, right? Next. And if you want to know about radar, you have to know the radar equation. There it is. Next. And the uh, Maxwell's equations. Next. Now you know everything you have to know about radar and phased arrays. There'll be a quiz a little later. A question. Yes. Uh, when you use the radar, you send out pulses. Right. And the same uh, tubes that send out the pulse, are they the, they're the same tubes that process the echo that comes back? No, uh, that, the tube that sends out the pulse usually is a very high power tube. Or if it's uh, later technology, it's a transistor. That's a separate transistor from the one that amplifies the weak signal coming in. Uh, in my uh, giving lectures uh, around the world, I, I usually do traveling, and I, I like to take pictures. So I'll show you some of my favorite pictures. Next. Next. Oh, here's me uh, going around the world. Uh, 80, what's it, 80 days around the world? Uh, I call it eight, 60 minutes around the world. Next. Uh, here's at a radar conference. You get a little bit of culture usually. Uh, this is in uh, Kyoto, Japan. Next. This is at a tea house in uh, Beijing at the Tenement Square. Tenement Square where the big riots were. I recommend that tea house. They're very talented entertainers there. Uh, that's where they took Kissinger when he came to China. Next. There she is again. I always wondered if that was a he or a she. You never know. Yeah. Well, what happened, the last time I was there, a couple of years ago, I was there, and I asked, and they said, it's a she. It's a she. Very pretty woman. Uh, very nice. Next. Imagine taking that off every day and putting it back on. Uh, here's a uh, peasant, uh, actually a, a taxi driver, pedal. In uh, Varanasi in India. Oh no, this is Rakistan. Rakistan. <laughs> I admire his uh, makeup here. You know, this whole work of art. Work of art. Really, a work of art. Next. This is in Papua New Guinea. That's north of Australia. It's a local tribesman. The people in the center part of Papua New Guinea, nobody knew they existed. They thought nobody lived there. There was mountains along the coast. But uh, three Australian brothers decided to go across the mountains to look for gold in the interior. And what they found were people living there. It was not deserted. And this fella is all dressed up for a festival, a festival. And he has that thing through his nose. And you know what that thing through his nose is? He's the red radar. radar. Close. <laughs> it's an antenna. <laughs> a dipole antenna. Right, a dipole antenna. Does it get cable? He lives in the jungle, you know, the rainforest. Our iridium is at Elban, a thousand 
600 megahertz, wouldn't go through the jungle uh, rainforest too well. He's operating at VHF, low frequency, <laughs> so he can penetrate through the jungle. So you can go out at night. It's a very advanced iridium system. What? You can go out at night like a cat. Cat's whiskers allow them to, right, to right, walk right, through right, the woods right, and right, right. the things. Cat smile. <laughs> <laughs> very photogenic guy, you know. Next. Here he is again. I had a daughter uh, of a friend of mine bought this to hang over her bed. <laughs> <laughs> The guy or the I picture? Got <laughs> Eli, the guy or the picture? The, the guy. picture, the picture. Oh. <laughs> He's very photogenic. He even greases his skin. You know, it looks good, like a muscle builder. He is. Next. There he is again, a close up. I like taking pictures of him. <laughs> Next. Uh, here's a uh, woman at the border when you go from Singapore to Malaysia. She greets you. Next. Uh, here's a Russian dancer. They're known for their dancing. Next. Uh, here's a young Russian girl uh, learning fashion. Fashion. She makes up her own hair. Very nice. Very nice. Here, another, another one. Next. Next. They have uh, actually a TV a press there uh, and uh, a lot of culture with young children. Uh, High school students uh, performing. Here's a market, a uh, local market in uh, Vietnam on a Sunday. And uh, I like the little baby here, all dressed up for a very fancy occasion. <laughs> uh, she's a young girl, I imagine. She, they get married very young and have children very young. She's probably the mother. Next. Uh, here's in Nepal. I went to the cremation site there. And there's a holy man sitting there. When I went up to him, he went in this pose so I can take a photo of him. I like his watch there, you notice that watch? <laughs> <laughs> it's a Rolex, you like. It's a Rolex. <laughs> they make fake rocks, Rolexes, actually. Next. Uh, here's in the rainforest in uh, Thailand. You, you go 20 minutes into the forest there, and there she was. Uh, she probably makes up the whole headdress. Very, very pretty, very pretty. She was breastfeeding when I came, actually. Next. Uh, here's in Bali. I have a monkey on my back. It's a monkey on my back. What's he doing with your hair? He's cracking a nut. What hair? What hair? You know, that's so dangerous. You could have got babies. Uh, next. Next one. So he's, he's that same monkey. And he's picking your brain. He's picking my brain, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. uh, notice the monkey. He has his hand in my pocket. <laughs> stealing my papers. He actually ran off with my papers. And uh, a local photographer, you know, he had peanuts. He got it back for me. Next. This is in Sweden. Uh, she asked me for directions. I couldn't help her out, and I didn't know anything about Stockholm. But I got her picture. I didn't get her phone number. <laughs> Next. Uh, here's some of the papers uh, I have on uh, radar. Next. Another set of those papers on MIMO. Next. I'll be giving a couple of papers at the conference here at the Western Hotel in Waltham. That's a long trip for me. Uh, I also give a tutorial there for four hours. Uh, that's in October. You're welcome to attend. It's very nice. Next. Uh, here's some of the books I put out. Next. Same books. <laughs> Next. That's the large print version, isn't it? The second one? What? The second one was the large print version. <laughs> Back up. Let's see. Which one? <laughs> oh, this one? Well, they're all larger print. They're all larger print. Compare with the previous slide. Just comparing the two slides, you like. Uh, no. 
I couldn't decide which one I took the move. <laughs> Next. Oops, sorry. Uh, here's a, a flyer for my course. I used to give out the books free of charge, you know, to the attendees. Next. Uh, here's a, another one of my courses. Uh, next. Uh, here's that Scientific America paper. Uh, I have a few left if somebody wants it. Uh, the cover of the magazine. Uh, it's a picture I took of the radar standing in front that somebody asked me about. It. Uh, I asked them how come they didn't use my photo. They actually painted it. You know, they got an artist to redo it. They said typically they don't use photos. Uh, the other thing they said is I didn't use ASA uh, 25 and have a tripod. <laughs> they noticed. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be a good cover. <laughs> Next. Uh, I, I give this as a lecture. Uh, next. And uh, next. Here's me going around the world fixing radars. You notice the antenna here? And here's the sick, the sick radar. <laughs> And uh, I'm telling you, take two transistors and call me in the morning. It's, it's out of phase. What? It's out of phase. No, you've got a dish antenna. Sounds phase already on your, on your forehead. Yeah, I could have one. Uh, this is done by a fellow named Pat Arena. He worked at Raytheon. And uh, he's very good. Every time I did a lecture, he'd figure out a cartoon. He did the one with me uh, as a sphinx. Uh, that one, too. Next. Uh, now, this was you before the lecture, hopefully, you know, <laughs> unhappy and frazzled. And after the lecture, happy with the, a little bit of humor and fat with knowledge. Next. That's it. <laughs>
using milling. They were doing it by milling out a solid right, right, copper. Right. He was doing stamping out sheets of copper and soldering it together. It increased the speed a factor of a thousand. Right. He was to produce over two thousand a day versus only two a day. <laughs>